This video is about factoring polynomials completely. This is something we want to look at after you've practiced enough with each of the different types of factoring. And when it comes to factoring polynomials completely, this means we're going to face a, 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 a hodgepodge, a random assortment of polynomials, and we need to figure out on our own which type of factoring to use. So at this point, I'm just going to assume that you know each of the different types of factoring about binomials, the difference of squares, and difference in sum of cubes, and factoring trinomials, and, and about factor by grouping as well. So we do have a general strategy when it comes to factoring the random assortment of polynomials, the hodgepodge. The first thing we always want to do first is look for the GCF, look for the greatest common factor. And remember, that is about looking at the different terms in the polynomial that we have and thinking, can we evenly divide out from each of these numbers, each of the coefficients, or does each of these terms have some variable that we can divide out and bring out in front of parentheses and put the leftovers into parentheses? So we always want to try to do that first. Once we've found a GCF, and even if we haven't found a GCF, the next thought is, can we factor more? With the terms that we have left over, can we factor more? And usually, when we're thinking about can we factor more, we're looking at how many terms we have. That How many terms we have is going to be the clue for which type of factoring we need to do. We're going to go through these ideas with this example to factor this trinomial because we see three terms. It's 2xy squared minus 8xy minus 24x. And remember, our first thought will always be about the GCF. We're looking at two things when we think about the GCF. We're looking at the number parts, the coefficients, thinking about can we evenly divide a number from all of these coefficients that we see? And we can divide out a 2 from each of these coefficients. The second thing we're looking at are the variables. We're looking, do we find an x in each of these terms? Do we find a y in each of these terms? Can, what can we take out from each of these terms in terms of the variables? And we do see that each of these three terms has an x, and therefore we can put the x out in front with the 2. So the 2x is the GCF, the greatest factor that we can divide out from each of these three terms. With the GCF out front, we're setting up a set of parentheses and putting the leftovers inside. So the 2x divided from this first term is leaving us with the y squared. From the middle term, we're left with negative 4y. From the third term, we're left with negative 12. So that's great work for finding the GCF, but it's not going to end there. We need to get into the habit of, after you find the GCF, look inside the parentheses and think, can I factor this more? Now the 2x that we found for the GCF, that is an important part of our answer. And what I'll sometimes do is right at this part so I don't forget, I'm going to bring the 2x right down and, and leave it in front of where my answer is going to be. But for now, I can ignore that 2x. It's not going to make a difference. I just need to focus on what is left over in the parentheses. And we're thinking about how many terms do we have. We've got three terms. And with no coefficient here, this is the type of factoring where we're looking for a pair of numbers that multiplied together will equal that third term, and added together will equal the middle term. So uh, I'll focus on the multiply first. A pair of numbers that multiply together is going to equal negative 12. Here's the list of these pairs. Uh, since added together, they're going to equal a negative 4. That told me that the larger number is going to be the negative. And between these three sets, 1 and negative 12, 2 and negative 6, 3 and negative 4, the pair that's going to add up to equal that negative 4 is positive 2 and negative 6. And with this type of trinomial, we drop those numbers, negative 6 and positive 2, into the parentheses. They're going to go along with that GCF 2x out front, and there is our factored answer. Let's summarize our uh, strategy so far. This is going to be our standard approach when it comes to factoring a polynomial. Always, we're looking for the GCF first. And once we find a GCF, and even if we don't find a GCF, our next move is 
how many terms do we have? Remember, that's our clue for which type of factoring to use. If we have two terms, it could be a couple of different things. It could be a difference of squares. It could be a sum or a difference of cubes. And remember, those binomials when we factored, that was the kind where we would set up boxes and we would have exponents of two or three outside of these boxes. So with two terms, we're headed towards this approach for our factoring. If we see three terms, there are two different outcomes there, and it depends on our x squared term. Do we have a coefficient or not? If we don't have a coefficient, if, we, if our leading term is just x squared, then that's the type of factoring where we want to find a pair of numbers that multiply together will equal the third term, c, and added together those numbers would equal that middle, middle term, b. And if it's the trinomial where there is a coefficient on x squared that we see, a c, we see a number here like 2, 3, or, or greater, that's the kind that's a little bit longer. It's about four steps where we multiply first and third, we split up that middle term, and we finish with factor by grouping. And if we see four terms, you're pretty much going to try factor by grouping. Now, this little uh, organization that we have here, it, it doesn't handle every single type of factoring out there in the world, but it does cover the main ones, the most popular types of factoring that we'll have to do. What's this? This is a table I made a few years ago to try to explain all the different ways to do factoring. And, and maybe I'll just make a different video to go through. This. You might be able to see that this first, and we're working from the top down, the first box is factor out the GCF. And after we factor out the GCF, it's about how many terms do we have. Two terms is going to lead us down this path, and three terms could be a couple different options. Four terms, right to factor by grouping. So the bottom line is there are lots of different ideas that we have to put to use in order to be able to do this thing that we just call factoring. Lots of different ideas that are at work but there definitely is an organization. There is a structure to it, and with a little bit of practice and understanding each of the different types, we can get to a point where we can factor anything thrown at us. Okay, this is the time for you to take out pencil and paper and work through a problem. We will definitely go through the solution, but I want you to stop the video and try this problem. In fact, I think I have a few here for you to try. So five polynomials, it's a hodgepodge to factor. There are going to be different things at work here. I want you to pause the video, work through these. Remember, we're always doing GCF first, and then with what's left over, can we factor it more? So go through these five, pause the video, and then come back and we'll look at the answers. Okay, so let me just lay each of these solutions on you in case you've worked through all five and you want to just see if, if your answers match up with mine. These are the solutions, uh, the factored form that I have for each of these five polynomials. So that fourth one was a tough one. We're going to go through each of these five examples, but you're going to have to go to part two of factoring polynomials completely.